So now that I've hired my actors and I've found a place to, to shoot my movie, it's time to actually create my movie to, as the director, take this script, this big picture that I have, and start to divide it up among the actors so that working together they produce the movie that I want. And remember that I'm, I'm trying to produce the following script, right? Lisa says, knock, knock. John says, who's there? Dwayne, Dwayne who? Dwayne the bathtub, I'm drowning. So again, it's my job to take this script and divide it up between the, the, the two actors in this. And so it's time for me to tell Lisa what it is that she needs to do. So let's see, I left off uh, here where I was in the stage. I want to go back over to Lisa, so we'll click on Lisa down here at the bottom. It sometimes takes a second to, to move from the stage over to Lisa. And because of what I was doing when I was, was last working with uh, Lisa, she actually opened up in her costume view. Uh, I want to write scripts, so you know we're going to click here at the top and go to the script. And I want to tell Lisa what it is that she's supposed to do. And so the idea is that when I say places everybody and action, uh, I want her to go to this location. Uh, you know, remember, I was just sort of moving her around earlier, and I decided this was a good first place. Eventually, with this with this movie, I'm going to actually have her move around, and so having her start in this location is pretty good. So we're going to go to motion, and something you may not have noticed earlier when we were playing with motion is that, in fact, as you do this whole thing of lifting up uh, air characters and moving them around, uh, some of these values down here actually change, and so this makes things really easy for kids who don't want to have to learn about the coordinate system. You say, hey, look, that's where I want Lisa. Hey, that turns out to be, that's 44, negative 57, right? That that's uh, where I want her to go. And so I want her to go to that location, and then the, the, the movie will start, right? And I want her to say her line. Her first line is, knock, knock. And so the question is, how can I make her say knock knock. Now there's a couple of things we can do here and the ba most basic way in Scratch is that Scratch has sort of a cartoon like uh, you know cartoon bubble interface that can work with. If we go to the looks tab here you see that the very first thing that I can ask a character to do is to say something and so I'll drag, drag that out and we're gonna ask Lisa to say something for a certain amount of time and you see there's two openings here that I can change. I can change how long she says something by putting a number in the circle, just like we put numbers in the circles for location. And then there's this square opening, and square openings tell you that they normally expect text. And so we can say in here, what is it that I want her to say? I want her to say, knock, knock, for two seconds, right? Now, just stop right there for a second. If we look at this, when I press the green flag and I say action, we get this cartoon bubble that says, knock, knock. In it. And of course, once she's set it for two seconds, it goes away again. But, but I want her to say, knock, knock. And then her next line is to say, uh, Dwayne. And then her final line is to say, Dwayne the bathtub, I'm drowning. All right, so I can put all of that in there. It's all spread out there on the screen. And there's her lines. All right, and then of course, I can go back to John. Oops, down here, we'll click on John. And we want John to do sort of a similar kind of thing, that when I say places everybody, I want him to go to his opening place. So let's put that in there. Uh, and so his place is right there. And then I want him to say, his job is to say, Dwayne, uh, sorry, he starts by saying, who's there? And then after that, he says, Dwayne who, right? And so Lee John has two lines, Lisa has three lines, and together they have this, this set of actions, right? And so now I can say, okay, guys, you understand what you're supposed to do? Places everybody and action and, oh, wait, that's not quite what I want, is it? Right? So hopefully most of you are already starting to realize that was going to happen, but your students will sometimes make this mistake. You know, there's Lisa's lines, right? There's John's lines. But, but when we look at this, they actually say it right over the top of each other, right? They don't actually go back and forth, which is what we want. Now, if these were real people, of course, what I would say is, hey, John, when I say places, everybody, I want you to go to your opening place, and then Lisa's going to say a line. Right? There's a command here that says Lisa's going to say a line and you should sit and listen to her. 
right? And so I need to tell him, stop and listen. Well, how do I do that? Of course, in real life, you'd say, listen until she's done saying something. But we know right now that everybody says something for two seconds every time they speak. And so this is easy. I can just tell John, hey, wait two seconds, right? Because she's going to be speaking right there. And then say your line for two seconds. And then wait again. And I'm going to show you a little trick here. Uh, since I want, want him to wait two seconds every time, rather than changing it every time I drag it out, I actually can come over here and change it. So I can say, wait two seconds, and then say, Dwayne who, and then wait another two seconds while she says, Dwayne the bathtub, I'm drowning. Uh, strictly speaking, this one isn't necessary right now. But I, I just sort of like to think about this as, you know, if you think about this original script, there's sort of five actions. You know, you're either speaking, Lisa says knock knock while John waits, oops, Lisa says knock knock while John waits, and then John says who's there while Lisa waits, and Lisa speaks while John waits, and so on, and even at the end, Lisa's speaking while John waits. And so I like, I like thinking about this as there's five segments to my movie, and I want each of them to do something for those five two-second segments. And so there's John's five two-second segments, and we can go over to Lisa, and we can, again, change this to two seconds here so that I can insert this. And now Lisa has her five two-second actions. And so I can press the green flag and action. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dwayne. Dwayne who? Dwayne the bathtub. I'm drowning. So now we have our basic knock-knock joke story written. We've got two characters who go back and forth and they tell the simple story that we wanted them to tell. At this time, before you move on to the next lesson, please take the time to make sure that you have a copy of this story in your own little local version of Scratch. Get caught up if you haven't been following along and make sure you understand what's happening. There's not a lot there yet, but make sure that you understand what's happening so that as we move forward, you continue to understand what we're doing.